Many have been given this job before you. So he makes reference to the fact that this religion isn't just a new religion, it's a legacy. And whose legacy does he mention? وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمٍ You are the continuation of the legacy of your father, Ibrahim. If you think about Ibrahim السلام, the last thing that comes on your mind is easy. He has to leave his family in the middle of a desert and walk away. That's not easy. Before that, as a young man, he has to challenge his father and the entire community. That's not easy. He has to be thrown into a harriqu wa suru ali hatakum. Throw burn him alive. He has to be thrown into a fire because he believes in Islam. That doesn't sound like easy. When he gets finally gets older, and now his son is old enough that he can run around. Balagha ma'ahu sa'ya. He gets old enough to run around with his son. He sees a dream that he's slaughtering his son. Over and over and over again, he gets trials and challenges that no human being has ever faced. Allah has never asked a human being to abandon their family. Allah has never asked a human being to j- jump into a fire. Allah has never asked a human being to slaughter their own child. <laughs> He's been asked to do things that nobody was ever asked. The hardest test you can think of. This is even described in the Quran. وَإِذِ ابْتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ When Ibra- Ibrahim was, especially Ibrahim was tested, like nobody else by his master. There's ikhtisas there. Like Ibrahim السلام, had the hardest, hardest, hardest tests. And Allah in this ayah, when He told you and me, by the way, relax. It's going to be easy. Islam is going to be no problem. By the way, you're on the same track as your father Ibrahim. That's not very comforting. <laughs> Because that man did not have easy tests. So how am I supposed to be relaxed now? For a second he told me things are going to be easy. Now he's kind of telling me things are going to be difficult again. But actually he's not. He's giving the example of Ibrahim السلام, for a very beautiful reason. He's giving that example because Allah is saying, if Allah can make jumping into a fire easy, if Allah can make leaving your family in the middle of a desert easy, If Allah can make you the only young man who stands up not only to his father, but to an entire community, easy. If Allah can make you stand up to Nimrud and challenge him directly, easy. If Allah can make you take a knife and put it on your child's neck before, because Allah commanded it. If Allah can make that easy for him, then what is he asking you? He didn't ask that from you. He asked much less from you. You know, is actually, all he asked you was to stay away from filthy things and made the good and pure things halal for you, and mandated a few salihat, just do these few good things, and stay away from these few bad things, that's it, that's all he asked. So we are being told by the legacy of Ibrahim السلام, no matter what difficulty you have, you will never be able to compare your difficulty to the difficulty Ibrahim was put in, السلام, and even Allah can make that easy. So you have no reason to wonder, or ever question that Allah will make ease for you. مِلَّةَ أَبِيكُمْ Ibrahim. And he's the one who asammaakumul muslimin. He's the one who named you Muslims. Mufassirun have looked at this ayah two ways. Maybe it's Ibrahim alayhi salam who named us Muslims, which is an indication in the Quran, or Allah Himself named us Muslim. Either way, it makes sense because Ibrahim is a messenger of Allah. So even if he named, it's actually on behalf of Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. Regardless, what does the word Muslim mean? The one who gives up, the one who just accepts. It comes from Salima, to be at, to, to be at peace to be at ease and calm. And when you say aslama, to submit, actually means to submit calmly. You're, you're okay with it. When Allah tells you to do something, you're not agitated about it. You're not like, fine, I'll do it. You're not like that. You're at ease on the inside and you just willingly submit yourself. If it's Allah saying it, it must be good for me. No matter what my mind says, no matter what my family says, no matter what my friends say, no matter what society says, when Allah told me this is better for me, I am at ease. If you can do that, if you can get to that point, then you are the legacy of Ibrahim salam. Calling yourself and myself Muslim is easy. Being Muslim is not, a, it's a different thing altogether. And it's not even about behavior. It's about something very deep internally. I am completely satisfied with what Allah and His Messenger command. I'm, a, I'm comfortable with it. And I'm at ease with it. And I'm at peace with the fact that I'm obeying Allah. I'm not thinking that if I obey Allah, I'm going to miss out on something. Because you know, He's asking me to stay away from these pleasures, or these opportunities, because they're haram, 
And if I stay away from them, I'll be the one at loss. No, I'm at ease that there's no way anybody ever obeys Allah and they're at loss. That is never a thought that crosses my mind. That is, he named you people Muslims, the ones who submit completely before Allah. The ones who are at ease. The one who come with comfort before Allah. And I sincerely pray that especially our young generation finds that comfort with Allah. That they're not, they're not agitated by the commandments of our deen. That our young, young girls, when they're thinking about wearing hijab, they're not annoyed by it. You know? And they're not, oh, why do I have to wear this? Or our young men aren't agitated by the idea that they have to pray early in the morning. Why do I have to get up at this time? Why can't I just pray later? You know, it's so annoying. This, this attitude is actually the antithesis of Islam itself. You can't have that attitude in Islam. Islam means you gave it up. You gave up. You accepted it completely.